Hi, I'm Jim, and yeah, it's a little dark in here. I'm in the garage because it's too cold outside. It's in the low 40s up here in Michigan. And today I'm going to try to mount and wire up a light bar on my snapper. I got it from Amazon. Here's the numbers on the box if you're interested. And I think it was like 12 bucks for two of these. I mounted one on my snowblower and I'm going to mount the other one on my snapper. Now, I know you're going to say, wait a minute, you already put a headlight on your snapper. This is going on the back of the machine. It's actually going on the bagger. Because where I live, I can take the leaves and go out in the woods and dump them. Well, next week, time change is coming. And it's dark before I even get started actually. So what we're going to do is I want to mount this on here so when I open the cover to dump the leaves, the light is going to be shining out where I'm dumping the leaves so I can see what I'm doing. And uh, we're going to try to wire it up. Now we're going to take the switch that's on the machine which is a single pole, single throw. That means it turns off and on one wire. We're going to put on a single pole, double throw. That means, if I can grab it, it's going to turn off and on one wire at a time. You hook three wires to the bottom of this switch. You put the hot in the center front headlight goes on one, back headlight goes on the other. So they're not both going to be on at the same time. So that's what we're going to mount up today. Uh, I'm going to start out by drilling and mounting the light on the back of the cover for the bagger. And we're going to put a 7 32nd hole in there to mount the light. It came with some screws for mounting. If I put it right here, it ought to shine out pretty good. As soon as I get this done, I gotta get out and do leaves. They're starting to pile up a little bit. And that doesn't quite want to go in that hole. So I'll grab a 1364. See if that fits. Oh, that's better. I probably should have a self locking nut on here. comes loose, you know it's going right in the bag with all the leaves and you're never going to find it. Now depending where you buy these things, of course they're made in China, so it's all metric. I need a 10 millimeter wrench and socket or two wrenches or two sockets. Now I've got some 
metal shielding here. It's like the plastic stuff I use, but the plastic stuff has a slot in it, so it's easier to snap on the wire. And I'm afraid it's gonna come off with all the vibration and moving. So this is solid, there's no slot in it. You have to fish the wires down through from the inside. So we're gonna move you over here and try to get a picture of this. I've got a connector on here already for the wire. What I want to do now is try and figure out how much of this I need. Let's move you over here. We got to take off the battery cover and loosen up the battery. Sorry about that. Now I got rid of my they call them Christmas trees. They're a little button with a, a stem on it with a bunch of little fingers. I got rid of them. They're paying them, but they never come out very good. And once you use them a couple times, they don't work anymore. So what I did is I drilled and tapped the holes that them things snapped into, and I just put quarter 20 screws round head Phillips screws in there and that works so much nicer and the back one has a wing nut on it because the screw comes through from the inside and that's what holds the battery in place so we'll have to take that loose because we've got to slide the battery out of the way a little bit and this is one of them little tiny guaranteed not to leak batteries. So, let's see how much of this stuff we need. You don't want to try to cut this with pliers because that's what happens. It crushes the end shut. You want to use a Dremel tool and a little cutoff wheel. So we want to fish this through here. Down behind the battery. We'll stop it about here. And I'll follow the wire around here. I don't know if you can see. We're going to zip tie it to the wire that goes back to the starter. And we want a little slack on here. And we want to go up to this plug. Now I'm not going to worry too much about it being on there semi-permanent because uh, I don't take the bagger off until the end of the year when I put it in storage. Okay, got my little Dremel tool. I don't want to lose my mark where my thumb is. <laughs> this could be this could be interesting. These things are spring loaded. But I'm gonna have to put that down. And keep my knee on it. These are the new style. The old ones, you used to have to use a little screwdriver. They had a little tiny screw. These have a little butterfly connector and it's spring loaded. They work really good. And we're gonna go over here to the outlet on the wall and cut this off. Now you may have a 
few burrs in there. So I got this really small file that I use for sharpening my chainsaw blade that just fits inside that tube. And we'll see if we can knock the burrs off it. Okay, I got a roll of wire here. Now this is, it's small, but it's actually a number 14 gauge wire. So what we want to do is measure out a little extra than what this thing is long. Because I would rather throw away a couple inches than to cut it a little bit short and have to throw away four feet. Now, we'll see if we can get it shoved up through the center of that tube. This could be the interesting part. Actually, it's going pretty good. So it shouldn't have said anything. Gotta be close. Good night. Feels like a couple more inches. There we go. Now, we're gonna mount this back here. And I guess I'll wiggle you around some more because I want to show you how we're going to mount this wire. We're going to use zip ties. And we're also going to use what they call mounting blocks. These are self-sticky little square block and they have a slot through them for the zip tie to go through. And again when I go to take this off I'll just cut the zip ties and pull them off. Put new zip ties on next year. Now if they come loose, they do have a hole in them where you can put a small screw. These are a little bit old and the backing doesn't want to come off of them. Then you can't get rid of it. We'll stick one right there for that. Zip tie just slides right through it. Put it around the wire.
try some of these. Oh, that's much better. I want to put another one right here. Got stuff laying everywhere. Now this little connector I got, you just strip the wires and shove it in. You, there's no connectors, there's no screws. get you any closer so you can actually see what's going on here or not okay we're just gonna stick this wire in there now in this particular light it doesn't matter which one is hot and which one is ground Another zip tie. Now I'm going to finish running this cable up to that battery box and I'll be right back. Okay, I think I got enough zip ties on it. It comes off the top, around the top of the corner, down between the engine and the bumpers runs around the bottom of the engine with the wires that are already there goes through the battery box around behind the battery comes out in the front and comes up to where the switch is so now got to cut in front of it and get some tools here we got to take this cover off. Now this is something that a lot of people don't even know exists. Let me grab my switch over here. This isn't a real big issue for me because I don't leave my machine outside and I don't work in the rain. But if you can see in this switch so the switch can work, there's a crack around there. And if water gets in there, it's going to corrode your switch. Well, you can buy these little boots. It's just a rubber cover that goes over your switch and screws on the way it mounts. And it's totally sealed. I put them on a lot of stuff at the shop to keep metal dust, especially on the belt sanders, out of the switches because that that really tends to short them out. They always for some reason put this decorative round nut on the switch. It's supposed to be on the outside. I put them on the inside. I want the nut on the outside so I can tighten it up. So let's take this switch off. You typically just need a 9 16 wrench to get that off of there. And I usually try to hold them with a pair of pliers because if you try to really tighten that screw up, you're going to bend the lugs on the back of the switch. So we want to take this off. I'm going to short out the contact so it's going to turn the light on. And now we'll take the other wire off. The one in the center, or this one, is the one coming from the battery. 
it really doesn't matter how you hook them up. It will on this switch. The hot wire has to go to the center. Now we can double check this to make sure we got the right wire. This is the hot wire. Guess we're we'll turn that off. So, where's our new switch? I hope them didn't wiggle around. This is our hot wire. That goes in the middle. Now when you activate these switches, especially a double throw, when you switch it this way, that does not connect these two connections. I'm hoping you can see that. When you throw the switch this way, it's throwing the contacts that way. So this wire we're going to throw it towards the front of the machine so the wire for the headlight has got to go on the back of the switch. on because they got the switch on. These little tiny screws don't always want to cooperate. Now somewhere on here I have to pick up a ground because The light is mounted in the plastic cover, so the ground is not going to do me a lot of good being grounded through the case. So I just grabbed a bunch of connectors that I needed to try and find what I want to use. And this is something I made a long time ago. Wife gave it to me. It's an old cookie sheet. And when I dump nuts, bolts, washers, cotter keys, connectors, you got to get them back in the box without falling over the edge. So I drilled a hole with a hole saw. And all you have to do is shake them towards the hole and they go right back into your container. So I think that's what we want to use right there. And we'll cut that off. What do I do with my wire cutters? Oh, I laid them someplace. Nice, huh? <laughs> Where did I put those? Back there in a box of mounting bars, tabs. And yeah, cut that off right there, it should be fine. Now 
I just got to find some place I can pick up a ground. Maybe I'll just hook it right to the battery. that get that put back in place and I think we want to screw that nut down a little more that should do it put our little rubber boot on snug it up a little now we just gotta have a ground let's see what happens Can't see if it's working. I have to go back here. Okay, <laughs> I guess I lied to you. This LED light is sensitive to polarity. Most of them that I've worked with, it doesn't matter it, how you hook them up, they work. This one does not. So we've got the, let me bring you over here. Put the switch forward. Turns on the headlight, switch it backwards, it turns on the light in the back. That's going to be so much nicer than wearing that little headlight and uh, trying to see where I'm going. All I got left to do is put the battery box cover back on. Let me wiggle you forward here. And we're done. Now again, I've got a screw going through from the inside out that holds the battery in place. And on that, I use a wing nut. Let me get this cover on here. I don't really know why they had to put these on. I mean... I guess it looks nice, but they're a pain when your battery goes dead and you got to get the charger out. Fortunately, this machine has a rope. Now, if you can just get them lined up. put this side on first. <laughs> Maybe I'm going to have to. It certainly doesn't want to line up. There we go. One started anyway. Oh, this 
this is really being a problem. spot like this where I have trouble getting something to line up I'll take the screws or bolts over on a belt sander and I'll grind a point on them so it helps them line up and get where they belong. Now we'll put the wing nut on the back and we're done. I hope some of you found this interesting and helpful if you were able to dump your leaves out in the woods like I am. Uh, really saves on buying them bags, especially the paper ones. They are expensive. So I'm going to run out and put my suit on, my coveralls, because 44 degrees riding around not moving much is a little bit cold for me So again, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps some of you and Don't forget to subscribe. I really need your help on that And until next time work safe have fun and keep on snapping. We'll talk to you soon. So long